Hello everyone, my name is Stanley St. Rose and today we're going to be talking about the book of Genesis uh, within the Bible. Now before I go into the summary and analysis of this biblical book, please remember to leave a like, subscribe, and or comment so that the channel can continue to grow. So the book of Genesis uh, begins with God creating uh, the universe. Uh, it starts with God uh, creating the heavens and the earth, um, and pretty much it goes into um, how the Spirit of God just created everything out of nothing. Um, and, you know, he doesn't have to tell anybody uh, why he did this. He doesn't have to answer to anybody. Um, God is sovereign over the universe. He created it. Um, that's why later in the Bible, um, in the story of Job, God will say to Job, well, were you there when I created the foundations of the earth? Were you there when I set the foundations of the earth? Um, which is very significant. So God is saying, you know, I'm God. That's just what it is. You know, I don't owe anyone an explanation for why I'm God. Um, later, Jesus Christ will say, you know, that he is the beginning and the end. And, and that's quite significant. You know, if you're the beginning of the end, if you are God, if you are omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent, you don't have to answer to anybody. You don't have to explain anything to anybody because you're God. You do what you will uh, because no one can bend your will, um, which is quite significant. Because if, if, if God is God and he has to answer to his creation, I mean, he wouldn't be the sovereign over the universe. Uh, but because he is sovereign over the universe, um, he just sets things in motion and, and they, they happen uh, because... Um, that's who he is. That's his nature. Um, so you get the first two chapters of Genesis. Uh, and after the first two chapters, after the creation of the world, the earth, um, you know, the stars and everything that exists in the universe, uh, we go into the story of Adam and Eve and the fall of man. Uh, we know that Eve eats from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Adam also eats from the tree. And the serpent played in Eve's head or lied to Eve, deceived Eve. Um, and, you know, God told Adam and Eve not to do this. Um, you know, God confronts Adam. He says, did I not, did I not tell you, you know, not to do this thing that you did? Um, and Adam, you know, he blames Eve. He says, you know, God, the woman that you gave to me, you know, she gave me of the fruit and I did eat. Um, so he, he's kind of like blaming, um, Eve for giving him the fruit, which is something right there that, that deserves to be looked at. Cause like, it's like this thing in man where, um, you know, that, you know, God wants us to acknowledge when we do wrong, God wants us to acknowledge or God wants us to repent. But a lot of times, instead of acknowledge our faults and our, and, and instead of acknowledge our sins, what we will do is blame it on somebody else or not take responsibility. And, and that's the first thing that God wants us to recognize is that we are sinners and that we do do wrong. Um, and that, you know, in order for him to give us grace, in order for him to give us the, the gift of salvation, we have to recognize that we cannot work for salvation. We have to recognize that we do not earn it. Uh, it's not something that we deserve. It's something that's given to us out of love. But Adam, instead of um, repenting and acknowledging his fault in this situation in, in, in the Garden of Eden, he decides to blame God and blame Eve. Um, so, of course, the punishment that God gives to Adam and Eve, um, he tells Adam, you know, um, from, from for the rest of your life, you're going to have to work by the sweat of your face, by the sweat of your brow uh, to um, really earn your keep, to, to eat, um, to, to provide for yourself and your wife. Um, and for Eve, um, God made childbearing um, even harder, um, which is still quite significant. Both things are still significant to this day. Um, they're so significant to this day um, and because, you know, a lot of women around the world, they have a hard time giving birth. Um, some women die while giving birth. Um, so it's a very serious issue, issue even in the modern world today, uh, with uh, people uh, going to really high-tech hospitals. You still have women who die while giving childbirth um, in the U.S., in modern countries. Um, it still happens quite frequently. Um, and, and of course, with Adam, uh, the thing that's, that's still significant uh, is that, um, you know, if you want to eat, if you want to pay your bills, you have to work. And the punishment that God gives to the serpent 
is that it has to um, eat, uh, you know, dust um, and, and, and pretty much live on its belly for the rest of its life. So the punishments are, are quite significant, um, and the punishments still exist throughout the world today. After the story of Adam and Eve, we go into the story of Cain and Abel. These are two sons of Adam, uh, and uh, so a lot of people always have a problem where uh, they will say, well, where did Cain get his wife? Uh, the Bible is very specific about this. It tells us that Adam and Eve had lots of sons and daughters um, because, you know, they lived for a very long time. Um, Adam lived for 930 years. Um, and so um, throughout those sev several hundreds of years, um, Adam had lots of time to have many sons and daughters. And they started to multiply uh, um, on the face of the earth. And so Cain um, had lots of wives or, you know, people, women uh, to choose from um, to get married, um, to get married. Um, so the story of Cain and Abel is quite significant. Um, we see that Cain hated his brother because God favored um, Abel's, um, Abel is Cain's brother. Um, God favors Abel's offering uh, because Abel's offering was was a really great offering, um, and and Abel didn't hold anything back from God. Now Cain, Cain's offering was not good, and God said, you know, I'm God. You, you know, your offering is not really that good. If you do good, of course I will accept you. If you don't do good, I will not accept you. Uh, but Cain, instead of doing good, instead of changing his ways, he was like, no, let me just kill my brother. And God warned him against this, but he doesn't listen to God. He lets sin into his house. He lets sin into his heart. And he just develops this hatred uh, for his brother, and that leads him um, to kill Abel. And later, Jesus says within the Bible that, you know, if if you are of Jesus, if you're a follower of Jesus, but you hate your brother, that you have no light within you. Um, and so Cain is this dark person that, uh, you know, what he does is uh, he hates his brother. He has this darkness within him, and he kills his brother um, based out of jealousy, um, he, uh, out of coveting, um, out of the, just the fact that God favored um, his brother's offering rather than his. Um, so um, Abel dies. Um, Abel dies by the hand of Cain. Um, Cain gets his punishment, um, and God puts a mark um, on Cain um, and pretty much says that... Um, um, and pretty much says that, you know, if anybody kills Cain, that, um, um, that they'll be punished seven, um, you know, seven times. Um, so it's very significant. Um, so after that, um, you know, Cain goes out, he builds a city, he has children. Um, he has children, um, the mark is upon him and, um, you know, he has lots of children um, the mark, you know, is upon his forehead. He has lots of children, uh, and um, his his children just start to multiply um, on the face of the earth. Now, what happens next is that um, the, we're, we're told of in Genesis that the sons of God or beings from heaven they saw that the daughters of men uh, were beautiful, and that they came down. They had children uh, by they had children. Uh, by these beautiful women, they took wives and they had children. Um, and um, these children were very wicked in the sight of God. God did not. Um, God was not pleased uh, by. Um, God was not pleased by these kids. God was not pleased by their wicked hearts. Um, and God was grieved. Um, and, and and you know um, there was pain in God's heart. Um, and God decided that he was going to flood the world. But, but Noah found favor in the eyes of God. And Noah walked with God. Um, and so um, God flooded the world. He killed all the way to get people. He killed the, the, he wiped the world clean. And he set a bow in the sky to, to this covenant between man and God that he would not flood the world again. So rainbows in the sky is really uh, God's sign within the sky that he will never flood the earth again. Um, it doesn't say anything about fire, though. Uh, it does say that God will never flood the world ever again. Um, so that's, that's quite significant. Um, so sin, wickedness uh, of that generation, uh, of the people on the earth at the time, God wiped them clean uh, because of what the, the, the sons of God that came um, down uh, you know, they had children, they took, um, the sons of God took 
wives, human wives. They had these men of renown, these men of honor, um, and, and these great soldiers and, and, and war heroes and men of strength, uh, men who can just you know lead other men, men could kill anybody. Um, so um, that is quite a mystery in of itself of all the types of, of men in the past that were just um, pretty much superhuman. Um, so after the flood, after God saves Noah, um, and we, you know, of course we're going to the story of Noah and God talks about Noah's journey and building the ark and the meticulous, thorough uh, planning that goes into uh, making the ark, that goes into building the ark. Um, God, is, what's one thing we learn in Genesis about God is that God, you know, very, he's very much in the details. He very much cares about the details, the details in your life, the details in what he wants, the details in his will, because he tells Noah how to build the ark inch by inch. And every step of the way, God was there with Noah. Um, even when Noah gets into the ark with his whole family, um, his sons, their wives and, uh, and his wife and everything, uh, God is the one that pretty much closes the ark. You know, God closes the ark himself. Um, so that 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 is very significant right there on its own. So God floods the world. Um, he saves Noah. He, he favored Noah. Um, God, um, Noah was walking with God. And, and pretty much everything on the earth dies, all the flying creatures, um, you know, God saved male and female of every species. Um, the animals in the sea remain in the sea, but all the animals that were on land were on the ark. Uh, so after, so God saves the animals, he saves Noah, um, the flood happens and everything dies, all the wicked thing, all the wickedness, all the wicked beings, people, uh, all those things died. And then when we're in the time of Noah, um, we have the story of Ham, um, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Now, Ham um, saw his father's nakedness. He went into his father's tent while his father was drunk and naked. Uh, and he saw his father's nakedness. And he started to joke and laugh. And he brought in his brothers. But his brothers did not look at Noah's nakedness. Uh, but Noah, you know, uh, as punishment, he curses his Canaan. Canaan is his son of of Ham. So um, um, Noah curses Canaan and later in the Bible we see how the Israelites really destroyed the descendants of Canaan um, and it is not pretty. It is not pretty whatsoever. Um, so the the story of Shem, and, um, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, it goes on pretty far. We see that humankind spread all over the earth. Uh, we see them do um, become many different nations, tribes, and countries. Um, and pretty much we start we start to see the world that we know today. We start to see the at least the seedlings or the beginnings uh, of the countries and nations and of the peoples that we know today. And they're all descendants of Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Or, or to even go back even further, we can all say that they're descendants of Noah. Um, so that goes on. Um, and then after that, uh, after the story of Shem, Ham, and, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, um, we see, we go into the story of Abraham. Now, Abraham is the father of faith. Uh, this is the man, uh, this is the man of faith that God chooses um, to set his covenant with, to redeem the whole world, basically. Um, and well, not basically, this is just the man that God chose to redeem the whole world through. Um, because that's why um, God calls himself the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So Abraham is the father of faith. Um, Abraham, you know, was in his father's household or in his homeland. And God says, listen, you know, you're, you're not going to be a bum. You're not going to be, you know, whatever you are. I'm going to do something great with you. I'm going to do something new with you. So God, um, just, there's no Bible at this point. There's no Christianity, there's no Judaism, there's no, there's none of that. God just takes Abraham out of his homeland and he says, I'm going to make something great out of you. I'm going to make nations come out of you. Um, and Abraham believed in God. He trusted God um, and he had faith in God. And, and again, which is, you know, faith is absolutely, absolutely very important because we know it's um, by, by grace through faith that we are saved. Um, and so Abraham is the father of faith. And um, through Abraham uh, um, and his faith, uh, we see a lot of, of God's glory within the Bible. Uh, we see God gave Abraham um, a child, um, Isaac, when he's 99 and Sarah was 90. Um, um, Abraham 
um, you know, got a son. Um, now, there, there's several things that happen. We see there's several points where Abraham, um, where God helps Abraham. Um, um, there's um, Lot, um, Abraham's nephew. Um, there's that story. Uh, we see God save them several times. There's there's a, there's, a, there's a segment or a portion of Abraham's story where he goes into Egypt and he tells the the people, the men in Egypt, that Sarah, uh, which is very a, a very beautiful woman, he says, "Oh, you know, Sarah's my sister." Uh, and Pharaoh took Sarah to be his wife, but God has to come in and rescue Sarah and not let Pharaoh go um, and have children by her. Um, you know, and, and actually, you know, take her as his wife. Um, God went to Pharaoh in a dream and said, don't touch her because she's a married woman. Um, so God really, when he promises somebody that he's with you and that he's going to keep you, he keeps his promises. And then that's faith. Faith is not um, in, in what you believe or what you want to think of God. Um, faith is having faith in or believing what God said he's going to do. Um, having faith in God's promises and all the promises that God makes to Abraham, he keeps them all. All of them come through um, fruition, um, which is quite significant. Um, so God gives Abraham several sons and daughters. Um, he blesses him uh, and he keeps his promises to Abraham. He takes him from his homeland. Um, everywhere Abraham goes, God blesses him and he, he multiplies in finances and children and servants and land and everything. Um, and then we go on into the story of Isaac. Um, we also see God's rescue Lot um, from Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah, of course, in, of very wicked. Um, God saves God saves um, Lot um, from the city, um, you know, from all of the sexual immorality and all of the wicked things that people were doing in Sodom and Gomorrah. Uh, God burned the cities to the ground um, and he saves and he saves Lot and his family. But, you know, uh, Lot's wife was turned into a pillar of salt um, and um, he, um, God saves uh, Lot and his two daughters. Um, and, you know, God works in, in, in every area of Abraham's life, um, in Lot's life, uh, to rescue them, even though there's several points where they may have messed up or, or, or fall down, God was always there to pick them back up. Um, and so after, you know, the story of Abraham, Lot and his daughters and, and Sodom and Gomorrah, we go into the story of Isaac. Um, so Isaac, of the founding fathers of faith, or the, 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 the three men that God chooses to be known by, you know, God is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, these three men, Isaac's story is, is significant, um, for, at least in my opinion, because uh, he's the only one that has one wife um, throughout the, the, his, his life. You know, God chooses Rebecca um, for Isaac, which is quite significant when you let God uh, have 100%, um, um, you know, you know, you, you invite God to have the, the, the authority over your life, um, his choices that he makes for you, they're 100% perfect because Isaac, um, God selects one wife for Isaac, um, and he never goes any other way. He stays, he stays with, um, Rebecca, uh, for his entire life. Um, and, um, you know, all, um, all really work out perfectly. Um, so that's very significant right there. Um, so Isaac and Jacob, um, we know that Jacob is the son of Isaac. We did, we go from Isaac and Rebecca. We go into the story of, um, um, Jacob and Esau, uh, Jacob, God loved and Esau, um, God hated um, Esau is a person from the womb, you know, he, he just wasn't a man that was after God. He, you know, he traded his birthright for a bowl of soup and, um, you know, he just, he's just a, a person. I mean, God blessed him. God increased him. He had land, he had money, he had servants, he had wives. Uh, but he's a man that just... Um, a hairy man that just was not after God. Um, Jacob was the, the, I mean, they're twins, which is quite significant. 
Um, you have these twins. They look very they look very similar, but they have some key differences. I mean, Esau is hairy. Jacob is not hairy. Um, Jacob is, you know, he was a person who was a deceiver, you know, a, a thief. Um, he tricked his brother out of his birthright. He, he, you know, his mother, Rebecca, you know, and, and Jacob, they, they, <laughs> they went into identity theft, um, tried to, tr they tricked Isaac into blessing uh, Jacob instead of Esau for the birthright. Um, that story is very significant in of itself. But yeah, so after um, Abraham's story comes, um, in Abraham's story, you have Lot's story, and then you go into Isaac's story, and after Isaac's story, you go into Jacob's story, um, and Esau, and after Jacob and Esau's stories, you go into Jacob uh, becoming uh, Israel, uh, going to uh, marry um, Leah, and then Rachel, um, and also having um, sons uh, by uh, Leah, uh, Rachel, and two handmaidens. Uh, by those four women, uh, Jacob has 12 sons and a daughter by the name of Dinah. Um, and those are the, the, the 12 tribes of Israel. Um, yeah, those, that's where the 12 tribes of Israel come from. That, that's where Joseph comes from. Um, so Jacob is his name is his name is changed to Israel um, and that's where the the people the Israelites or the country of Israel um, um, you can call them Hebrews or um, um, there, there's several names that they get uh, but Jacob God changed his name to Israel um, which you know means to wrestle with God and it's a nation that you know that that wrestles with God and and out of that, uh, you get the 12 tribes of Israel, you get the story of Joseph. Joseph, you know, he's born, um, his father loves him, his father, favor, his father favors him, uh, his brother sells him into Egypt, they throw him into a pit, then they sold him, then he goes into Egypt, then he goes into Potiphar's house. Um, from Potiphar's house, um, Potiphar's wife tried to made, make him uh, kind of like this, this, this man that, cause like Joseph was very attractive and Potiphar's wife try, tries to sleep with Joseph, um, and then frames him, uh, Potiphar throws Joseph into the prison from the prison. Um, um, Joseph gets promoted and he becomes, uh, the second in command in, in all of Egypt. Um, and so God raised him and God was with Joseph throughout his whole story um, and God lifted him up and everywhere he went and that's the that's the 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 benefit and that's the glory that's the blessing of having God with you wherever you are because he elevates you no, no matter in what situation that you're in um, so through Joseph God blesses the the other brothers God lifts up the other brothers um, and throughout seven years of famine um, you know, God rescues many people, rescues the brothers, rescues the people of Egypt and a lot of neighboring lands and countries, um, which is very significant. Um, so the story of Joseph is quite long, uh, but it shows you, um, it shows you the plan of God from Genesis to, from the beginning of Genesis to, to the end of Genesis, uh, because the, the, the stories, they align, um, perfectly and it even leads into Exodus. Um, so which is, which, I mean, the entire Old Testament is just one thing from another, how, and you can see how everything affects everything else. Um, so in, in, um, Egypt, um, all the brothers, eventually they all come down to Egypt. Uh, they multiply, they have lots of children. Um, Jacob, you know, eventually dies. Israel, the, you know, the father, Jacob, he dies. Um, they don't bury him in Egypt because he did not want to be buried in Egypt. Um, he wasn't supposed to be buried in Egypt. Um, uh, and then after that, you know, you have the, the sons of Joseph, the sons of the other brothers. They all multiply and multiply uh, within Egypt. And they literally became a massive, massive people um, um, in Egypt, which is, which is fulfilling, you know, God's promise to Abraham that he would multiply uh, his descendants as numerous as the stars. Um, and the story goes on. Um, 
you know, Pharaoh dies, um, the, the, uh, the brothers multiply or the sons of the brothers multiply. No, of course, the brothers, uh, later the brothers die also. Um, and then, um, you know, Genesis pretty much ends with um, um, the Israelites or the, the sons of Jacob. Uh, the sons of Israel, they're multiplying, they're, they're becoming a, a massive amount of people. Um, and they, they, it ends with them in abundance living in Egypt. Um, and then later the next book of the Bible, which is Exodus, will go into how they, they become slaves in Egypt and they're forced to work. Um, and, well, it brings about the Exodus from their being forced to work and forced to work and, and forced to be servants in Egypt. Um, so that's that's Genesis. You get a lot a lot of stories um, from the beginning to the end. Um, you get the foundation. You get the creation of the universe. Uh, you get Adam and Eve. You get where humans come from. You get um, the 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 founding fathers of faith, which is Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Uh, you get the twelve tribes of Israel. Uh, you get the story of Lot, you get the story of Noah, you get the great flood. Um, Genesis, I mean, in, in each story is packed with information. I mean, one sentence alone, I could spend an hour on analyzing it and talking about it and how it reflects in our world. In terms of deeper meaning, in terms of analysis, you know, Genesis just, you can never stop reading it because each sentence is jam-packed with information um, jam-packed about human psychology, uh, about truths about the world that we live in, and about God's ultimate plan for the earth and the universe. Um, and everything is connected. All things work for the glory of God. Um, and so God had a plan. And, 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 and when, when we go into the New Testament, um, God even says, like, it, the Bible tells us that, you know, before the foundations of the earth, Jesus Christ was already crucified. Uh, so when you look at Genesis, you look at the, the biblical stories, they're all connected, which is very fascinating because when you look at how wide and how vast these stories are and you find the, 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 the details, the intricacies, and you find the close connections and how it all comes together to fulfill one story, it is quite breathtaking and it, it is quite marveling. Uh, because you get everything. You get everything from from uh, creation of the universe to the creation of mankind to God creating mankind in his image. You get the justice of God, God's plan of redemption for human beings, um, God dealing with humans' disobedience, um, and God's ultimate plan to redeem mankind. So quite fascinating. Um, Genesis just doesn't really, there really is no end point. Um, it, it's just a story that just keeps on giving because every sentence has something to add about the, 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 the world around us and, and the universe and God's ultimate plan. So that, that's just my summary um, and, and analysis and deep meaning of a lot of things that are going on in Genesis. Um, I tried to make this as, as short as possible so we can get a general idea of what's going on in this. Uh, but that's the summary, that's the analysis. Please remember to leave a like, subscribe, and or comment. And I'll see you guys in the next video.